time for this week's pickup video. Well, this week I went to Clarksville, Tennessee <clears throat> on business. And then I drove down to Memphis, Tennessee from Clarksville. And along the way, I stopped at some uh, various thrift shops, Goodwill stores, some different game stores. And I had quite a few uh, good finds here. Uh, some total for everything I've got here in this pile, I spent around $50 for everything. So I got some pretty good deals in here. <clears throat> so let's start off with the Game Boy cartridges. I'm starting to collect a lot of Game Boy games. And I finally picked up a Super Mario Land for my regular Game Boy. I like the Super Mario games. I know this is a pretty common cartridge out there, but I didn't have my collection, but now I do. Then I picked up Wild Snake for my Game Boy. It's kind of like a Tetris game, but with snakes. Uh, it plays really nice. It is a lot of fun. And it's uh, pretty challenging. Uh, I really like this game. Of course, I like Tetris games in general anyway. So I recommend this game for your Game Boy if you don't have it. Because it is, it is pretty good. Then I picked up Gear Works, which is a puzzle game using gears. You try to build gears across the play field to get to the uh, gear on the far uh, left side, no, right side of the screen. It's okay. Uh, this was buy two games, get one free. This was the free game. So I went ahead and just picked it up anyway. It's kind of like, nah, I don't know if I'll keep it or not. Then I picked up the Smurfs platforming game with your little blue buddies. It's okay. It's a pretty challenging platforming game. It's not too bad. It's made by Infograms. So it's, it's okay. It's not that bad. And then I found the sequel to Montezuma's Revenge. This is called Montezuma's Return for the Game Boy Color. And it's basically a graphically enhanced version of Montezuma's Revenge that was on the Atari 2600, the ColecoVision, and I think there were some other consoles that was available on as well back then. But I love Montezuma's Revenge on my ColecoVision. So when I saw the sequel to it, I was like, oh yeah, I got to get that. And it's just as hard <laughs> as the uh, original Montezuma's Revenge. Then from my Nintendo system, I picked up Terra Cresta, which is the sequel to Moon Cresta. Uh, basically, you're flying over a planetscape this time, battling your enemies. And you get your extra ships when you run across these little silos. And you'll see like a number or two or three or four around them. You got to shoot all three or whatever number uh, number bubbles there are to get your booster ship to dock with the ship you have currently to increase your firepower. I love Moon Cresta. So I didn't realize they made this for the Nintendo, the a sequel to it called Terra Crest. I just found this uh, down in Nashville. I was like, oh, I got to get that. Pretty good game. Pretty good game. What's really neat though, is it has a design uh, level in there as well, where you can go in and actually config where you put your ship when you pick them up. You your different sections, you put them all together, or space them out along along the screen, wherever you want to do. And you can actually control what direction they fire as well. So it's kind of neat to have a little editor in there that allows you to configure how your ships will appear when you do find them. Highly recommended game from the Nintendo. A lot of fun to play. Then I picked up some more stuff for my Sega Genesis. I found a boxed Pac-Mania for my Sega Genesis. 3D version of Pac-Man. Uh, 3D isometric view. Uh, what I like about this game is it gives you the ability to jump over the ghosts. So if you find yourself getting in a corner, you actually jump over a ghost to get away. Which kind of makes it a little bit more interesting to play this game. If you like Pac-Man, then you'll you'll love this game. It's a lot of fun. Then I picked up Test Drive: The Duel, driving game for my Sega Genesis. Uh, I like the Test Drive series. I played the original Test Drive on my PC way back when, so I think it was kind of cool to find something on my Genesis of that caliber. And it's not too bad. It controls a little a little funky as you're steering. When you let off the uh, controller, the steering will slowly go back to center. 
which is okay. You just gotta get a little bit used to how sluggish or you know the steering is. It's not real responsive, but it's playable. And then for my ColecoVision system, got some good pickups. I found Monkey Academy, which is a learning uh, type game. Uh, this is deals with math problems. Your little monkey up the top of the screen will present you with a math problem. And you use your little monkey at the bottom of the screen to try to find the correct answer by pulling down these little tabs that you can jump up and grab. Once you find the right uh, answer, it'll acknowledge, it'll drop a little uh, bar, you know, that you have to pick up with your monkey and then get to the very top of the screen to give that bar to the monkey at the top to finish off the math problem. It's kind of neat. It's not too bad. Controls are a little bit weird. You know, they got to be exactly right to get up to the next level. So other, other than that, it plays it plays okay. As you know, I'm trying to get a full collection of ColecoVision games. So I just went ahead and picked it up just because of that. Then I found one of my all-time favorite arcade games on my ColecoVision. Mr. Do's Castle. This is a great game. I love the original Mr. Do. Uh, this is a sequel to it where you're inside of the castle and you got to knock these bl bricks out of the floor. Kind of like Apple Panic. And you got to get all the cherries knocked out of the floor uh, in order to advance to the next level. Uh, it has the same kind of power-ups where you can get the uh, bonus guy to come out to get extra lives or whatever. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this game. And it, on the ColecoVision, it's not bad at all. And then I had a nice surprise from Collector Vision, who makes uh, ColecoVision cartridges now. Found on my doorstop when I got home. Moon Patrol for my ColecoVision. This was an unreleased game for the ColecoVision that Collector Vision is now putting out. They've actually got the original game program of Matt, Matt Holdenhauer or something like that that's working for them now. So I'm really hoping to see some more great ColecoVision games come out of them. Let's take a look at take a look here. Here's the cartridge. It's like a blue color. They make their own cartridge molds evidently. Nice label. It's got a nice little, it has a really great instruction manual. Here's, here's how it should have looked back in the day. This is the box I wanted, but unfortunately they sent me the other box. You can order it with this box here or with the arcade front. I would have rather had this box, but eh, I ain't going to complain. Put that away. And now for my Atari 2600, I have found whoop, Cannon Man. Cannon Man. Is that right? Yeah, Cannon Man. Which is basically uh, Human Cannonball, but this is the Sears Telegame version, which is uh, not very common to find. So I was very happy to find this. And then I picked up Pengo from my Atari 2600. This is a good port of the arcade version for the Atari 2600. They did a really good job porting Pingo to the Atari 2600. So this is pretty awesome. Uh, basically what you're trying to do is kill all the little snow bees running around on your screen. If you line up the three flashing squares, that gives you a power-up where you can actually run over the snow bees with Pingo to advance even quicker. So and it's a pretty good uh, logic game to play. And then lastly, i got a couple pickups for my... Sega 32X, I picked up T-Mech, which is kind of like Battlezone. It's okay, the controls are a little off, it, it kind of shoots around everywhere, it's kind of hard to control the tank. But it's alright, uh, something to add to my, my collection. And I was really stoked to find a Knuckles Chaotix for my Sega 32X. Uh, I like the Sonic uh, games. And this is a, a really good game. It's got a lot of neat power-ups you can do. has some great uh, effects that the 32X takes advantage of. The music's really nice. It's a really fun game to play. If you have a 32X, this is definitely one to get to add to the collection if you'd like to play it. So that is all the pickups for this week. Next week, I'm heading to Detroit. See if I find anything up there. So thanks for watching.